Hey there everybody, it's Mark Crowley. I'm back with another How to Draw video. Today we're going to be drawing a face in profile, and I've put down a few lines here just to help us with uh, putting the facial features in the right spot. If you want to follow along with this part of it, uh, you'll want to know the dimensions. It's four and a half inches on all sides, this uh, larger box. Uh, in centimeters that works out to around eleven and a half. This smaller box is two and a half inches on all sides. Uh, and of course it's split uh, right down the middle um, with an intersection of lines. And that comes out to around six and a half, maybe a little under six and a half centimeters, if indeed you want to work at the same dimensions that I'm working at. Let's begin by uh, drawing just one more line, and uh, that's going to get us started. I'm going to uh, bring back the trusty ruler, and I'm trying to create a line that comes from around here down to here. This is going to help us for placing uh, the nose and the chin later on. So I'm just going to add uh, real quick just that line right there. Now there's two other uh, lines that I'm going to do uh, in time lapse, but I want most of this video to be real time. Let's go ahead and get in the basic line of the sort of forehead heading uh, to the back of the cranium, if that is the right word for it. It probably isn't. Let's go ahead and get that line in place. Okay, so here you see the line of the forehead. It comes up and uh, is at a fairly straight angle at the forehead. Then it begins to curve into a circle, kind of nearly a perfect circle uh, for the contour of the head until you come down here to the back of the neck. Now the placement of these lines uh, is related to this being a, a male uh, character versus a female character. Uh, and maybe I'll do a separate video in which we do a female face in profile, profile but the uh, the you know width uh, of the lines here is reflective of a fairly uh, wide neck which is one of the key ways of um, you know uh, seeing the difference between a male and female character uh, in terms of a drawing. Um, let's go ahead now and uh, add the line of the ear and that might be it for the time lapse uh, at least for right now. So there's the uh, contour of the ear. You can see the placement. It sort of begins right at the edge of this box, but uh, is uh, shifted upwards. Uh, and maybe the distance from here to this uh, crosshair line uh, can help you with getting that right. Now, I'm not going to talk too much about drawing ears in this video. I've got a separate video on that, and I will link to it uh, in the description. But let's go ahead and refocus. We're going to zoom in here, and I'm going to try to do all real time. Uh, the uh, key facial features when drawing a face in profile. Alright, so let's get started with this uh, contour line uh, and we'll begin by uh, drawing a line for the forehead or right around the, um, the brow, I guess, where the eyebrows would be. The brow velar region. <laughs> And uh, using this uh, uh, diagonal line that uh, we put in at the beginning of the process, that's going to help me draw a line from right here, uh, the bridge of the nose, heading down towards the tip of the nose. And it may help you if you begin uh, by drawing an indication of the tip of the nose so you sort of know where you're going. And then you're kind of uh, just connecting those two lines. Now, of course, there's so many different uh, nose shapes. Uh, it's impossible to teach them all in a single uh, video. Um, but um, again, I would uh, urge you, as I always do, to consult reference, look at photographs, uh, compare all the different types of profiles you see. But having touched this line here, you can uh, begin to uh, bring this line down so that uh, the sort of bottom of the nose that begins to curve into the upper lip crosses right at that line, that horizontal line of the crosshairs. And uh, another nice thing, if you can get this sort of diagonal line in place, is you can begin to pay attention to uh, different um, aspects of the line, like the negative space. As I curve this line down and I begin to uh, come to the upper lip, you can pay attention to this negative space, this shape that's created here, can help you sort of see what it is you're doing. And uh, note that the way I'm drawing it, this upper lip is not going to touch that diagonal line. It comes close, but it does not quite uh, reach it. Now this uh, male character that I'm drawing is going to have his lips slightly uh, parted, ever so slightly. Um, now sometimes coming down to the lips, the lips are some, one of the hardest things to do. And I find sometimes that it's helpful to stop, take a break with that, 
and instead move down here to the chin and uh, get that line in place first because we've got these diagonal lines here or we've got the one diagonal line that will uh, help us see where that goes. Um, this line of the uh, underside of the jaw more or less following here, maybe tilting up just a little bit. Then having got this in place and giving it a certain um, size uh, relative to this square, I'd say it's a good third, maybe a little more. Then I can feel confident about coming in here and beginning to uh, have that line head back and uh, become the line of the lower lip, or the sort of underside of the lower lip. And as I said before, it can be very helpful to and when you have that diagonal line in place, you can sort of look at this shape and, and make sure that you're uh, replicating that, and that can help with all that various other stuff. Now I'll come back to drawing the mouth uh, in a minute, but um, what I want to get to now is um, to draw the uh, eyebrows, which uh, begin right here quite close to the contour line. I was surprised as I studied photos. Um, the eyebrows, uh, at least for a, a men, uh, I'm less sure in the case of women, but it probably is similar. Uh, the eyebrows, when a face is in profile, can come very close to almost touching that line, which I suppose makes sense. They're not so far away from each other on the face. But anyway, I'm, I'm going up here, and uh, if you want to start to get into the details of, you know, the hairs of the um, eyebrows, what direction do they go in, they're sort of following the underside of the uh, brow, uh, as you see here, and then they begin to curve back this way. I'm going awfully dark here, guys. You might want to go a little lighter if you're unsure of, uh, of the final result you're going to get. And then as you come along here, I noticed in various photographs again that the eyebrows, by the time you're getting over here, they are beginning to um, fade. I mean, they're coming to an end. They're not nearly as dark as what you see over here, especially in profile. The The mass of darkness is way over there to the left. But again, lots of different eyebrows out there. <laughs> makes, <laughs> makes it sound like I'm describing them as a... They're right outside my window. There's lots of different eyebrows out there. What are we going to do? Uh, that was weird. That was just weird. Now we got this line in place here, and this is going to be super helpful for placing the eye. Now you got to get a gap here between the bridge of the nose uh, and the eye, and uh, happily it very nearly touches that upper line, and it becomes a kind of a triangular shape, the eye, when seen from the side. almost looks like a, uh, I would think of it as a candy corn <laughs> kind of shape, if, you, if you're familiar with that uh, candy crosses this vertical line and then over here is going to be the sort of curvature of the eyeball itself and if your character is looking straight ahead uh, then naturally the um, iris is greatly compressed and you're, you really are seeing it from the side to, to make it round, uh, fully rounded from this point of view would be a mistake I think unless he's you know doing a side eye glance or something I'm going to draw another line up here that's for the uh, fold of the upper eyelid. And that kind of gets us to the end of drawing the eye. You might want to do some indication of the lower part of the eyelid. Depends on the, the person, I think, or the way that uh, if you're studying a photograph, it depends on the lighting, maybe the degree to which you see this. But normally with sunlight coming from above, I'm going to erase this. Uh, guideline stuff here uh, and do just a tiny bit of shading here to, get, to show you how this would be finished off with uh, an indication of lighting, the light coming from above and where the shadows would fall. I think I should hold off though on doing the, the, the complete shading stuff until later. <laughs> until Why did you suddenly on the word later <laughs> go into the Brooklyn guy voice? Be consistent, Crowley. If you're going to go Brooklyn, go all the way. Anyway, so that's my drawing of the eye as seen from the side. And uh, now we can move on to uh, drawing the nose. Down here, as you get back to this contour line of the nose that we put in place earlier, 
Um, you want to get the nostril pretty close to the front there. As, again, as I looked at different uh, photographs, I was struck by how close the nostril appears to the contour line itself. And then coming back here, there is this sort of line that uh, defines the edge of the nose or of the nostril. The nostrilar region, <laughs> Curly, come on. And uh, I would say be very careful about outlining this too heavily. If you start going up here and drawing, you know, really harsh lines right there, you're going to kind of call too much attention uh, to the nose, I think. There will be a lot of shading uh, later on, but let's move on down to the mouth. I find personally that this is one of the hardest things uh, to draw. I'm going to begin by drawing a very light uh, indication of, a, again, another sort of like triangle-like uh, area. I sometimes find that before going all the way into drawing the uh, opening of the mouth that it's helpful to get something in place uh, to guide me toward it by way of these uh, lines of the lips. And then like I said, I've, this character is going to have the lips slightly uh, parted. So I'm going to we'll see maybe just a hint uh, of the teeth here. As we go back and uh, finish this off be careful about making the line of the mouth go too far. Think, uh, you know, pay attention to this line here and the distance there. You might be tempted to make this very long line that keeps going back farther and farther, but that is not what we see uh, in real life. And I can't resist putting a little shading here for the upper lip. It just doesn't look finished. I can't bear to see it looking unfinished. And there you go. With that, not as painful as I thought it would be. Um, you don't want to get too carried away with uh, delineating this lower lip. I saw in a lot of photographs uh, of guys that you could barely even see um, where the lower lip ends compared to the like shading that comes beneath it. So uh, I would say, you know, exercise extreme caution in terms of putting too dark of a line around. Uh, the lower lip. You can kind of get away without uh, adding too much shading in there at all. And that, believe it or not, is getting us near the end of the key uh, facial features. And uh, what I'm going to do right now, and just uh, using a little time lapse because it would be boring for you to watch, is I'm going to erase these uh, guidelines uh, so that we can get into adding some shading. Okay, so having got rid of those uh, guidelines, I'm going to carry on with drawing the underside of the jaw here. Now, this is just the contour line. Um, what happens, uh, especially with the male uh, jaw, is that there is a very um, subtle line that occurs. I wouldn't even call it a line, really. It's uh, basically revealed mainly by way of light and shadow. But you get this angle heading up and then uh, begin to change direction as it nears uh, the, the area where the ear is going to be, and then it kind of comes along like this. Now, you know, people, uh, again, there's going to be varying degrees of uh, how sharply defined this is, just on, on various people's faces. Uh, and I imagine with, uh, with a bit of weight gain, uh, even, you would find that this line is not so clearly uh, defined. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and uh, get into the shading. I find that um, uh, shading is crucial in terms of uh, helping us understand the the uh, shapes, the, the structure of what we've drawn here, especially here uh, on the underside of the uh, jaw. So you can see how I'm kind of darkening in this area without turning it into a, a real line, uh, the way you can do up here with like the fold of the upper eyelid and so forth. There's going to be some shading back here behind the ear in most uh, lighting situations, I should say. And then let's come over here to uh, start adding shading to the uh, bottom of the nose. You can see me holding my pencil low to the paper. I'm trying to get an even kind of shading here. I find that, you know, exposing more of the tip of the lead to the paper allows me to get uh, that kind of smooth shading that I'm looking for and uh, darkening in. Right here, the underside of this uh, area of the nostril can get darkened in quite a bit, but as you go up, that's where I would uh, uh, urge you <laughs> to exercise caution 
uh, as I said before, going too dark in there can uh, just calls too much attention to the nose. Doesn't look realistic. Most people, you know, there is. We understand there's a structure there, but we don't see lines. We don't see sharply drawn. Uh, lines in that area. Adding a little shading here uh, at the bridge of the nose. This tends to be, this whole area where the eyes are tends to be a place where light cannot reach and so sh uh, shadow forms. Oh, the brilliant physicist Mark Crilly. When light cannot reach, shadow <laughs> forms. You see, you learn. It's so educational, this, educational, this channel. And, as I said, I'm not going to get too much into drawing the details of the ears I've, uh, in terms of teaching it in this video because we do have, uh, I have another uh, video that uh, teaches the, the interior of the ear in a step-by-step -step way. Uh, and, as I said, I'm linking to that in the uh, description of this video. But I'm going to go ahead and, all in time-lapse, I'll go ahead and finish up drawing the ear. All right, well, I think there's one last thing that I want to cover in this video, and that is sort of the hair, uh, the line of the hair as it goes from the sideburns up across the uh, the temples and towards the uh, top of the head. Uh, so let's refocus the camera, and uh, I'll go ahead and uh, do it, at least a little bit of the hair real time. Okay, so oftentimes when I'm drawing the, uh, the hair, uh, this whole area near... Uh, the sideburns and the and the shape of it as it goes up across the temples um, is it can be sort of a tricky thing in terms of understanding uh, first of all the shape it seems to come forward uh, at an angle for most people and then goes straight up again before reaching this uh, the sort of hairline where the the widow's peak would be if he has one. Um, but yeah, this seems fairly consistent, certainly in men, but I think to some degree also in women. Uh, this way that the hair uh, comes down towards an area where the sideburns would be and has this sort of secondary shape that heads up. And, and the hair is sort of, uh, you know, growing off of the forehead in this kind of a direction here. Uh, and uh, like I said, I'm not going to devote too much uh, 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 of this video to uh, drawing a particular hairstyle, but I, I thought I could maybe just show you how I would proceed to draw one type of hairstyle. Let's go ahead, go ahead and erase uh, across here um, so that you can see my idea of, uh, of how to add a hairstyle and how it sort of, you know, if you think about this being the uh, the the actual head itself, if you were to shave off all the hair, then of course most of the hair has to be coming up above that uh, initial line. And I'm going to refine this a lot in, uh, in time lapse. But one thing I think you will want to uh, learn about is where the hairline uh, ends over here back behind the ear. Uh, it uh, can be quite high up this uh, sort of area of exposed flesh behind uh, the ear, it can, the, the hair does not begin growing until quite high up there. And so you can see, um, again, if you study photos and, and if people have their hair cut super short, uh, you can see that exposed area of skin going quite high up there, maybe higher than you might imagine. And then, yeah, we come down here, and uh, just to finish this drawing off, I'm going to draw a diagonal uh, sort of indication of the collar. And that kind of brings me to the end of the main stuff that I wanted to cover uh, in a uh, real-time way in this video. I'm going to go ahead and finish this off, maybe uh, just give you one last little uh, indication of how I would uh, finish off. Let's say this person's got somewhat longer hair coming off from the top of the head, and then they get their hair cut very short, right? Then you understand that down here, you really are following that initial line before the hair begins to... Uh, go its own way. <laughs> and if it's my hair, it really goes its own way <laughs> because it's super, super messy. Let's go ahead then and finish this off in time lapse, and I'll be back with a few final words.
All right, well, there's my video on drawing the face in profile. I hope you found it useful. Uh, let me know if you'd like me to do one for the uh, female face in a similar uh, point of view. I'd be happy to do uh, a follow-up video like that one. But for now, let me say thank you to anyone who's supported me by getting any of my books, like Brody's Ghost, my graphic novel series, The Realism Challenge. We've got The Drawing Lesson, a graphic novel that teaches you how to draw, and, of course, the Mastering Manga series. I am always super, super appreciative of anyone who helps me out by getting one of those books. But let's go ahead and lay down this pencil. I want to thank you all for watching this video. I really hope you enjoyed it, and I'll be back with another one real soon.